Thank you, Sam, and thank you, Lynn, and good evening, everyone. And I particularly appreciate the opportunity to be invited here tonight to talk about something that I don't know a whole lot about and doesn't relate to anything I've ever actually done in my life. And so here goes, seven minutes. <laughs> Cathedral thinking. Cathedral thinking. Last Christmas Eve, I was with my wife Janice for a few weeks, and we were in Edinburgh, Scotland, and we went to St. Mary's Cathedral with about 1,000 or 1,500 other people in this marvelous building. And afterwards, we began talking about cathedral thinking, a concept that has been around for hundreds of years and had a bit of a profile maybe 20, 30 years ago, and then kind of fell by the wayside. And I was after a while aware that lots of people, maybe some here tonight, were conversant with what cathedral thinking is. I had absolutely nothing to do with the development of the concept, but I've become somewhat of an apostle, so here goes. Cathedral thinking, at its heart, is about this. Say, in the 14 or 1500s, you were an architect, given the task to design a cathedral. You would begin and undertake that chore knowing that you would never live to see that cathedral completed. Perhaps your grandson or granddaughter would work on the final drawings decades from when you began. If you were a stonemason and you were laying the foundation blocks or perhaps putting in place the cornerstone, you would know. You would not live to see that completed. But it might be a grandchild that worked on the upper reaches of the stonework in that cathedral. If you were an artisan working on the stained glass preliminaries, you wouldn't be around. But you were starting something that would outlive you. That's what cathedral thinking is. It's about the long term. It's about shared ambitions. It's about doing meaningful things that are long lasting, that we care about today. It's the only way to have the living generation stay tethered to the future. It's about doing things that in themselves are remarkably important, intrinsically so, but only people who are not yet born will see them in their completed phase. An example would be that in 1379, New College was built as part of Oxford. And a portion of it was this marvelous room with big, thick oak beams that were very, very important and built to last forever. And about 100 years ago, they were deteriorating, and they had beetles in them. And it was a bit of a problem. And so the fellow in charge of getting it fixed went to see the college forester and said, do you think in that vast acreage that you've got, there might be some trees that we could use to replace those beams? And the fellow reportedly said, we've been waiting for you to come by. For 500 years, from generation to generation, we've passed down the knowledge that in 1379, that grove of oak over there was planted so it would be tall and strong and mature and ready when you had to replace the roof. <laughs> cathedral thinking is many things. A cathedral itself it can be a place of worship, it can be a gathering place, it can be where people gravitate to, it can be an architectural icon, it can be the center of a community. Gathering places can also be public parks, or they could be a square, they, they, they can even be a city. The world needs great gathering places, and Vancouver should be one of them. We cannot take that for granted, and it would be easy to say that in 2010, what we got to do as Vancouverites, indeed as Canadians, was to welcome the world and show that we're a world city. And it would be easy to think that that all came about rather quickly. In fact, the first bid to bring the Olympics to Vancouver was in the early 1960s. And when that didn't work out, there was a second bid that built upon the plans of the first bid. And then when the second bid didn't work out, the foundation was in place for the third and successful bid. So what we got to do in 2010 was deliver on a 50-year-old vision, one that had been passed down from generation to generation. A dream that was alive and modified and changed 
And many of the people that had that early thought were not alive when their dream came to fruition. But the grandchildren were here to help welcome the world. The grandchildren were here to help make sure that that dream was built, was practical, or to participate in the games. So 50 years seems a long time. But those early Olympic visionaries were cathedral thinkers. Now, let's look at the year 2067. Not to put too fine of a point on it, but most, if not all, of you will be dead. <laughs> what if we built a cathedral and called it Vancouver? What if we thought today that each and everything we undertake and we do is toward 2067? Perhaps it behooves us to be mindful that as cathedral thinkers, when our country turns 200 years old, it deserves a Vancouver that's created by design, not by chance. <laughs>